Uh, now we talk about gene prediction. So gene prediction involves the prediction of coding sequences and uh, predictions of uh, where the translation starts. Uh, since we are uh, actually corresponding the genes with the proteins, uh, so we are in, interested in uh, finding the translation starts, which is actually the uh, start, uh, it starts with ATG. Uh, then uh, we also predict the uh, prediction of splice junctions. Uh, in case of eukaryotes, we know that exons and introns uh, their boundaries are marked by these splice sites or splice uh, junctions. Uh, what is the coding sequence? Uh, the portion of genes DNA or RNA uh, that is composed of exons and that uh, codes for protein. So exons put together, uh, they make up the coding sequence. So normally the coding sequence starts with start codon ATG and it ends with uh, one of the three codons, uh, which are the stop codons. Uh, this region is bounded uh, nearer 5' prime end by start codon and 3' prime end by stop codon. Uh, any full messenger RNA uh, that is obtained from a gene uh, that can have a CDS. So normally in order to get the coding sequence or CDS, sometimes uh, we get the RNA, messenger RNA and uh, we uh, kind of uh, um, make it, uh, it's DNA copy, cDNA. Uh, that process is called as reverse transcription. Uh, what is an ORF then? So open reading frame or ORF is uh, the the is the is the sequence. Uh, we, we can get any uh, DNA sequence, and we start looking for ORF, uh, where ORF is defined as anything that is bound between a start codon and one of the stop codons. So that might contain uh, regions other than exons. So these are actually the predicted uh, sequences. Since we are talking about those. Uh, codons, the triplet codons. Uh, here is how it looks. And this is the codon table. So our first letter is U. Uh, sometimes it is written with U's and uh, some uh, literature you would find with T, but uh, never mind. U is T and it's uh, T is U in messenger RNA. So we can have U in one side and we can have U here and we can have U here. So in this way U, U, U and it encodes into phenylalanine. How do we get into it? We try different combinations. So since there are 20 amino acids um, and there are four nucleotides, so if we get a sequence of one nucleotide, like A, T, G, and C, uh, we might end up representing only four amino acids. So what if that codon, uh, like the sequence of amino acids, uh, um, is, is determined by these codons? So what if we assume that codon is made up of two nucleotides, like for example, A with the rest of them, A with A and we can have A with C and so on. So in this way we can have 16 possible combinations. But here our amino acids are still more than that, so they are 20. So they thought um, the, the molecular biologists, they came with an explanation that this actual codon is actually made up of three nucleotides. So in this way we will have 64 codons. Uh, obviously all of them are not coding, there are some stop codons and uh, there is obviously this start codon here, AUG, ATG in DNA and so on. Uh, we have those stop codons here, two of them here in this window and one of them is here, so three stop codons and there may be more than one codons uh, for some amino acids. So there comes the concept of degeneracy of this codon, so it's degenerate, so there can be uh, more than one codons. So how CDS and ORF, they differ from one another. Uh, CDS is transcribed and is coding uh, for something. Whereas ORF, uh, you can get it through predictions. So all ORF may not be coding. So you get those ORF open reading frame by simply defining or uh, simply uh, designing an algorithm where you can ask your uh, program to look into uh, some ATG and some in-between sequence and stop codons. What are splice junctions? So we have uh, introns in eukaryotes. So introns and exons, uh, they are separated from one another. But at the junction of an exon and an intron, we start with GT. So actually this is the uh, segment that is part of intron. So introns, they start with GT and they end up with AG. So if we have GTs and AGs and they are spaced by certain distance, we suspect that this region is actually an intron. So the presence of these uh, splice junctions, uh, we call donor and acceptor because of their behavior in splicing. I'm not going to cover that. 
but they are called as donor site and acceptor site so these donor site and acceptor site their prediction is also important in gene prediction here is how it looks like in the actual sequence so you see those splice sites are shown in red here in this diagram introns are black and exons are blue so we have gt and then we have a big intron and that ends up with ag and then exon starts and then with gt another intron starts and then ends up with ag so in this way these introns and exons are separated from one another and we can we can get their boundaries by looking into these splice junctions this is how it looked like in prokaryotes we have uh, genes which are actually transcribed from same promoter so and every gene uh, within that we can get a start and a stop codon but these genes uh, they are transcribed from as i said from the same promoter whereas in case of the uh, eukaryotes here we are focusing on only one gene so there is a promoter and then obviously there is some intron region here 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 and we have exons so exons are separated from one another through introns and we can have a start site and uh, for that exon so actually the start for getting that protein this translation start site and stop site in the last exon so first exon has start and the last exon has stop and introns are you know they are marked by these donor and acceptor sites so pretty complicated situation as far as the eukaryotic organisms are concerned we combine different pieces of information uh, when we get the idea about those uh, these uh, uh, start sites and we get the idea about utrs and different uh, splicing uh, variants and uh, these these donor and acceptor sites we put them together so this thing is called as information fusion so we get different pieces of evidences while looking into these different uh, patterns or we can call them as signals and these signals they help us uh, identify the genes uh, what is the signal and what is the content? So we use these term uh, most often when we are doing gene prediction. So signal is a small pattern within the DNA, uh, whereas the whole region of the genomic DNA can be called as a content. So for example, the splice sites, starts and ends of transcription or translation, branch points, uh, these all things, uh, they are called as signals, uh, whereas contents may be the exons, introns, uh, UTRs and the promoter region. So so promoter regions they have some specific patterns in them so that pattern is called as a signal whereas the whole promoter can be called as a content so gene prediction involves prediction of coding regions uh, start sites as well as splice junctions 